Hello my friends and welcome back. Just a few gardening updates for you today. I want to start off right here with the cardoon plant. This is the cousin of the artichoke. This plant here perennialized over here at the edge of this raised bed garden and it's now towering at about seven feet. We've got over a couple dozen of these flower heads on here. These are going to soon erupt with this electric purple flower. Attracts many beneficials. Very beautiful plant. There's a lot growing on right now. This oak tree was a volunteer. We get some every year thanks to the squirrels. And although this is right next to the fence line back there, my neighbor expressed that he really liked it being there. I was considering actually taking it down, so we decided to leave it. My plan is to be harvesting some of this wood as the tree grows and use it to inoculate some mushroom spore. Right below here we've got a fig tree. Now this is a fig tree that I planted from a cutting several years ago. If you remember watching my video where I showed you how to prune fig trees, I stuck a bunch in this area. This one I'm letting go. Over here we got the chicken coop and the chicken run. And we've got a grapevine taken off over the edge of the chicken coop here. I just want to point out something for you guys. I get saddened when I see folks keeping chickens and it's just like dusty dirt and nothing else this is my chicken run and actually they have an open door policy as you can see here they can come in and out as they want and if I need to I can always enclose them in here but they've got plenty of foraging material back here they've got plenty of shade places to hide right here this is a pineapple guava and loaded with fruit it'll drop to the ground provide them with even more food and back in there we got some nesting boxes they're nice and shaded we got goji berries there on the other side anyway I think all chicken runs should look something like this these are all goji berries draping over the fence on that side got some purple tree collard coming up here just harvested a bunch of seed pods off of this purple tree collard as you can see, got them bagged up right now. See here, we've got the white variety of pomegranate. And this year, I've talked about this before, this being a predominantly male dominated variety. It's got quite a few fruits on here. Very excited about that. Proper pruning pays off big time with pomegranate trees. I've got another one over here. This is the wonderful variety. And you can see we've got some beautiful fruit setting all throughout the tree. Still some flowering happening as well. Beautiful bell-shaped flowers. Ooh, look at this hummingbird. Just swooped right by my head. Look at it checking us out. Some of the cool stuff that happens when you got an abundant backyard garden or food forest. Here we've got Santa Rosa plum tree. This tree loads down with fruit so heavy you gotta thin it. Last year I tested out just letting it go and we had smaller fruit and drooping branches so you really I mean just look at this branch and I've already thinned but you don't want three fruits all together like that even two is too much here we've got the Peter's honey fig tree so this tree is going to be loaded down in no time if you're not yet growing a Peter's honey fig and you're able to grow figs in your area, I highly recommend this tree. I think I've got five or six different varieties now and the Peter's honey just continues to amaze year after year with its productivity, the ease in which you can grow this tree. It's just a beautiful specimen. You see we got the pineapple quince. 
and a white nectarine not too much to brag about this year I had to do some pretty heavy pruning on this tree and as a result we don't have as abundant of a fruit set as I wish we did but that's okay the trees doing well now over here I've got a two-in-one black turkey and blackjack fig and we had some setting of fruit and they all just kind of disappeared I mean there's a few left on here but just like with the Peter's honey we got some smaller figs developing on I believe this left side is the blackjack this is a two-in-one planting if you look closely down there and I really need to focus on giving this planting more water this year this area gets full Sun and really doesn't get watered enough so it's been lacking productivity but you can see I've kept this planting here managed at a nice height easy for harvest so all we need now is a good fruit set to take off once again and we'll be set see back here we've got nopalis cactus and we got a bit of flowering happening here now you can eat the pads the younger pads than nopalis cactus so we should be going over that in a future episode sweet treat pluary I mean this thing puts off plum sized fruits like cherries so I mean it's pertinent that you thin the tree and I've been doing this to do it all at once would <laughs> just be too time-consuming honestly so I do a little at a time but oh my goodness just look at this and look at the branch still holding up but I don't want that branch to break you see and the branch is holding on like a champ I'm going to come out here and finesse the rest of those off. I don't want to damage the tree. It's better to pull off the fruit and not break the limbs off if you don't have to. Now this is an issue that I have dealt with on this tree many years now. The tips of many of the branches curl up. And I think it's due to whitefly. I'm not seeing anything on the tree right now. I'm not sure but one technique I do is to just strip those leaves off I always get some ladybugs in this tree every year so there's probably at least a few aphids on here as well but I'm not seeing any pests at the moment here we've got the passion vine creates edible flowers and fruits and the butterflies love this vine as well and this guy is running up into the wild blackberry shrubs that are coming over the fence from the other yard some beautiful artichokes here and there I have been dealing with an amazing amount of pests this year and hey look here we've got some apricots this one's starting to get pecked in This is actually my first apricot harvest here. Mm-hmm. I've got an apricot and an aprium here. Uh, they're not setting as much fruit as I wish. Actually, this aprium is not setting any fruit. And that's because, well, here's one fruit. I take that back. There's probably a few hiding on the tree. It's another reason why you gotta care for your trees properly and do some thinning because now we've got this year where it's not setting any fruit we're gonna miss a season of harvest because of the overabundance last year unfortunately the tree's still okay it's gonna come back next year with some fruit but from this point forth uh, I consider that experiment now finished here we've got an Asian pear and I've let this one just kind of go wild got a few little pears on here not too much 
every year I deal with fire blight on this tree you can see it's actually doing pretty good this year overall but I'm probably gonna have to be doing a bit of treatment moving forward just to avoid that here's another pluary different variety again loaded with fruit here it's a younger tree the loquats getting close and I've got a lot of smaller stuff that I'll be going over later different annuals fava bean try eating the leaves and the tips of these plants my goodness it's so good You can see my moringa patch down here holding up well a little bit of insect damage not much plants are growing up pretty quick we've got that sweet potato patch over here the chickens were starting to dig in there so I covered it with a little bit of fencing and those are growing up nicely there's another view of the chicken run area goji berries galore on these shrubs I can't wait Thousands and thousands. Fish pond holding up nicely. Fish are happy. I've already fed them today. Usually, when they see me, they start coming up to the surface. They're always ready to eat again. Still harvesting gomi berries here. If you notice a common theme in my garden, perennials. Lots of perennial fruits and vegetables. Easiest way to garden. Most rewarding, in my opinion. I've got a bag of leaves I collected in the wintertime composting in that bag, also working as a weight, holding that umbrella in place. We've been getting a lot of gusty winds lately. You can see the beautiful hollyhocks towering over here. I planted a whole lot more hollyhocks this year, different colors, but you can see we've got some pink and some white growing right now. Hollyhock flowers are edible. The leaves are edible. Here we've got some horseradish, another perennial. Not only are the roots edible, and you can make nice sauces out of them, but the leaves are also edible. Add a nice spice to your salads. Some more cardoons here. I've got lots of seed pods that I'll be harvesting off the different perennial greens. You can see here, here's another hollyhock I planted from seed. And this is what's been happening to a lot of my smaller plants. This is a bitter melon here. Looks like it's gonna survive okay, but a lot of pest damage. See over here, I picked up some emerald green arborvitae shrubs. These ones get about 15 feet tall. If you space them about four feet apart, it creates a nice, evergreen hedge so I've got several of those plan on picking up some more actually and just put them strategically in different areas of the garden where I want maybe a little bit more privacy or just a, a more natural appearance and check out all the different perennial greens that come popping up these are all volunteers I'll show you another patch in a minute but what I like about this one is they look like Christmas trees even as they grow up, so you can actually decorate them. Look at this guy. This is a volunteer. Came off the purple tree collard seed pods and mixed in here 
Here's another volunteer of ashwagandha. Actually, I don't know if that's a volunteer or if that came back from the roots. Here's a chayote squash lining up. This is chayote. This is a snake bean. Oh, by the way, my cranberry hibiscus. Well, we're down to one plant here. It's surviving okay, but the chickens took a liking to this area. We're dust bathing back here and thrashed. I only had uh, three out of the four that survived. I think I put four, maybe five in here. And they took out the other three that were living. So we're down to one here. Hopefully I can get that to survive. But yeah, here we go. These are all perennial greens from seed. Just some seed pods that fell to the ground. So we're going to have an abundant little greens patch back here. Other volunteers, more hollyhock. Look at all these seed pods, guys. These are all ready for harvest. Right here is a great time when they're yellowing and maybe not 100% dry, but they are mostly dry. You can get them before the birds. Here's an elderberry shrub. I put in three of these this year and they're really taking off, all three of them. Here I've got a persimmon. I have it supported right now. It was leaning over. I got to do a better job at supporting this tree. But loaded down with fruits. Well, that's going to do it for the update today. I hope everyone's having a good day. So with that, I want to wish you all a good one. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.